Um, all right. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get started now. Um, <clears throat> Jill gave me a few announcements to do before the demo starts. So I'm going to share the screen so you guys can see this. It might be a little easier to take notes. Uh, <clears throat> the registration is currently open for the spring member art show at the Great Frame Up. Um, the cost of registration is $25 and it gets you two entries into the show. Um, there'll be cash awards and ribbons as usual. And the opening reception will be on Friday, March 8th from 5 to 8 p.m. So you can go to the website, the Guild website, and you can get more details about the show and register there. And you want to register for that show by February 26th. <clears throat> Okay, the other thing is um, the meetups that we've been having at the Oscar Blues Tap Room have been really fun. And the next meetup is going to be on March 2nd at 1 p.m. Um, again, at the Oscar Blues ta Tap Room. <clears throat> That's basically the Tasty Weasel for those of you who know it by that name. And, um, you know, several people from the board will be there. You can bring questions, art you want to show to other people. Um, it's totally free and open to the public. And you can find that information in RSVP to that meetup on meetup.com. The next thing we have is the next member meeting will be in person um, on March 13th from 6 to 8. And it will be at the Firehouse Art Center in Longmont. Um, and the doors will open for that at 5.30 p.m. And Jill wrote this. <clears throat> she says, we have a special guest. That would be me. Uh, <laughs> and I'm also your treasurer for the, for the guild. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about art licensing. There's been a lot of um, requests for information on how do you get your art licensed. And so since I own a licensing agency, I will come and do a lecture on that. Um, that's also free and open to the public, and Jill will send out that information um, in the newsletter, as she did for this one, and also update it on the website. Um, after that, <clears throat> we have on April 10th, the following meeting, we'll have a local encaustic artist, Ashton Lazy Jones, who will be giving a demo on encaustic mono printing. Um, that will also be at the Firehouse Arts Center from 6 to 8 p.m. So those are those are the announcements. <clears throat> That's what's coming up, um, and you know, just remember that the 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 pressing deadline is Monday, February twenty sixth, to sign up for the Spring Member Art Show. Okay, all right. So any questions on that? You can pop them into the chat or just let me know, um, and I will answer those. <clears throat> okay. So um, next, I think we can just jump right into the demo. I don't think there's anything else that we need to cover. So um, Eulalia, <clears throat> I'm not going to give a, a full bio introduction because that has been done in the newsletter, but Eulalia Mejia is in Colombia. Um, a little trivia. Um, I was actually born in Colombia and I, and I gr grew up there until I was 14 years old before I moved here. So um, she doesn't torture me and make me practice my Spanish, but she should. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> Elalia is one of the artists that I represent in my in my licensing agency, and her work is incredibly bright and inspiring and colorful and fun, and it licenses really well because people love that. And so um, I'm really happy that she agreed to join us and to do a demo um, for all of us here. So with that, I will turn it over to you, Elalian. Okay. Thank uh, you, and Lisa. I'm going to pin you. Hold on a second. Let me pin you so that you're the uh, main person. There you go. Oh, sorry, not pin. Spotlight? Yes, yeah, spotlight. Hold on. Spotlight. There we go. Okay. okay. So hi, I'm in Colombia, but Colombia, South America. So far away, really far away. Um, And I want to start first by giving you a little show and tell of what I'm going to be doing, uh, what we are going to be making tonight. Uh, so it's it's going to be difficult for me to read 
or hear your questions. So please ask Lisa via the chat, any questions, and Lisa will tell them to me, and then I will answer if you have any, any questions. So I think I'm going to start now showing, stop showing my face and start showing you my hands. Okay, so I like working, I am, I work with mixed media and my preferred method of working is working in my sketchbook. I think it's very fun to have a sketchbook. It's very low pressure and you can do anything you like. And I want to- Ilalia, say... speak up a little bit. <clears throat> oh, sorry. So I'm going to- So uh, what I want to do now is to show you what, where my uh, first idea came from, from what we're going to do. And that is experimenting in my sketchbook. So this is something similar to what we're going to do, working with mixed media, with some papers and acrylic paintings, and then some color pencils and collage. So this was like the first time I tried that specific technique. And then here I have another example. And I do love color and I do love uh, very bright color, but I think with the technique we're going to, or with this demo, you can use it and you can use the colors that you prefer. I prefer really bright colors. So this is what we're going to do similar, uh, but I'm going to be working in a wood panel. And this is something that I did on wood panel. This is, I, I made this too. And as you can see, you can, work either on your sketchbook, a loose piece of paper, on the wood panels, if you have one, even on a canvas. So this is a technique that translates pretty easily to any substrate. substrate. So I think it's time to... Oh, I wanted to show you something else. I also like creating my own artist books. And this is a whole little book that I created when we were building our home. It was a lot of stress for us to be making our home, <clears throat> constructing our home. So I created this using that same technique. And what we're going to do is basically create a background using pretty um, neutral papers. So we're, we're going to start with collage and using neutral colors and then add spots and uh, colors with using our acrylic paints. And at the same time, we are going to create some papers, some collage papers using those acrylics. So this is the book that I created. I like using collage and I tend to use some of the same symbols, let's say. Like you will also always, almost always see little birds and houses and these very stylized, very stylized. people like <laughs> stylized. Thank you, Lisa. Stylized people. So this is a lot of collage and paint, and I find it very fun. So I wanted to show you this, and this is almost like an art was like an art journal for me, because it was a place that I could get my feelings out and try to hope for the best and have like a physical representation of what was going on and what I wanted to happen. So this is it. It's really pretty. So, um, one quick comment. 
Eulalia asked if any of you are following along in like working on this demo as you go along or if you do it afterwards once we release the recording she would be really interested in seeing what people have created um, using these techniques and so we would love it if you would post these in the inspiration group on the facebook inspiration group um so joe will send out you know, a reminder of of where to put that, but that would be a really great place. And then we can give Eulalia access and she can see what, what people created. Yeah, I would absolutely love to see what you create. So here I have, this is a wood panel and this is, you can get this anywhere in, in any art store. So let me show you some of the materials. Here I have, some collage papers, and this is what I mean by neutral papers. Uh, some old books from different, old pages from different books. And as paper get all, gets old, it also gets a really beautiful color. So depending on, on the book, you get different colors. So I have this, even this atlas, road atlas, and if that's what you can use. I also have some, if you need or you have near, you want to. You can also work with deli paper for the collage papers that, that you're going to make. Uh, I have blank white paper. This is a bond paper, so it's almost like a printer paper. And the rest are the Acrylic, acrylic paints. Again, I work with very vibrant colors. I know not everyone, everybody likes them, but it's the way I work. So you can choose your own color palette. What I usually have is like a very dark color and then a lighter version of that color. So here I have um, anthraquinone blue and a light blue permanent, and a luminous opera and a brilliant pink. This is a bright aqua green, and this is a pale olive. So as you can see, there's like a dark one and then a lighter one, more muted color. Here I have an Indian hue and a pale lemon, and this pale violet, because I really like it. But if you don't have like those two light and dark colors, you can always have some, add some titanium white to any of the darker colors or even the, the lighter colors and create a tint and that will work. And the reason, I work this way is because it's easier to create a color combination that is appealing and it and the eye will your eye will find it appealing because we're working with almost the same colors. So first what we're going to do and I don't know please let me know if I'm going to fast or anything. It's good. So what Okay, what we're going to do first is we're going to create some collage papers. So I get, this is my bond paper. I have my water right here. I'm using, if you have like a beat up brush, that's a great way to paint these papers because we don't want them to be perfectly fine. We want to have some texture. So I'm going to start by working with this really dark blue. There's no need to paint the whole page. It almost looks black on the screen or on my screen it's a really dark blue very beautiful okay. 
And because we have don't have that much time, I'm going to change to another brush and I'm going to paint. This is great. Also, you could use like a jelly plate or if you have a catalyst tool, you could also, that way is a great way to paint your papers and to get some texture. I'm creating this, now it's getting like really dry my acrylic, so I'm using a little bit of water here, let it work better to flow better. Uh, we might not use all these colors and all these papers, but I like having them to have the possibility to work with them later. I know one of the colors I like the most is the Luminous Opera, it's a neon color, and I'm going to paint. So using, as I told you, using like a really bright color, like the same color in really bright and then more muted or light colors, you get a great color combination. Those will always work. So sometimes if you're like a little bit lost, uh, on what colors to use, that is a great suggestion to use colors that are the same, but lighter and darker. And again, you can use titanium white, or even you want to create a more warm color of a more warm tint of the color you're using, you can use yellow naples to make it lighter. And it creates a beautiful tint, but it's much more warm. It's a warmer tint. And I'm starting with this because we need to let our papers dry out before we can cut them out and use them as collage. This is the Indian yellow hue. This is a new color for me and I really like it. I find it very, very beautiful. And I'm going to try out to mix it with a little white. And I'm mixing mixing it on top, directly on top of the page because this is a collage paper that we're later, later going to cut. So all these imperfections and this, I'm mixing it directly on the page is a great way to not care all that much. And, and be more relaxed. And I'm working really fast because these are just background papers, and papers that we're going to later cut. This is the pale yellow. It's almost, you can't, it's not showing up very well, but it's also beautiful. If you are thinking about creating in your own art journal or your sketchbook, it is perfectly fine to work with craft acrylics. If you're thinking about having something that is outside your outside your sketchbook is much better to use 
professional uh, acrylics because they won't get um, the light won't affect them as much and that way your work with last will last longer your colors won't fade but again if you're working in your sketchbook feel free to use craft colors craft acrylics i mean Okay, and these are all the colors I had. This is the last one. So I want to ask, is anyone following following along or is everyone watching, just watching? Can you drop it in the chat? Just let me know if are you just watching or is anybody following along? <clears throat> Not sure how many people know how to use the chat, but okay. <laughs> let's see. Oh wait, here we go. Let me see. Pop out. All right. Okay. Oh yeah, I Ooh. got a couple of. I we have a per, one person said following one person said watching somebody else is just watching Great. hi Fran hi Linda yeah so I think a lot of people are watching um and somebody else says they're trying it but mainly watching so okay great yeah and the other thing is just if you don't enjoy something just don't do it <laughs> <laughs> Linda says she loves the colors. I do too. Oh, thank you. So <clears throat> I, I want to show you now that I painted the colors here. Here are. Oh, I'm missing one here. This is my favorite. This <laughs> pink is so, so much. <laughs> Jill's going to like that one. She likes those really bright neon colors. Oh, and if you want to make the most beautiful pink you have ever seen, mix a neon pink with mm. white, with titanium white, and it's yummy. So these are <laughs> the papers we have right now, and we're going to put them aside. I'm going to put them aside and let them dry. And we're going to start working on our panel or sketchbook or, or paper. If you are going to work on paper, I would suggest like watercolor paper. I love that pad. Some... Yes, I love <laughs> it too. And you can use, this is a 140 pound paper. So it's pretty thick. And one thing I, do a lot of time. Yeah, Lisa. <laughs> so I one thing I do is it has two sides and one has a little bit of texture, but the other one, one is, is less textured. And I love working on the not textured side because it's less textured. So if you want to work on paper, choose something that is at least 140 pounds. It can be watercolor paper or the mixed media paper. There's lots of, lots of paper. Another option I can show you. This is a canvas board, if I'm not mistaken. It's canvas, but it's, it's hard. So this is another thing you can use. But I'm going to be working on, yeah, here, on my board. board. And now what we're going to start is playing with some collage. And the way I like working with collage, oh, I also forgot to mention this, matte medium. I use it to glue down 
uh, my collage. I prefer to use matte medium because it works really well with acrylics. You could also use, there's no problem if you use some white glue or even a glue stick. I'm not a big fan of glue sticks, but I know there are professional glue sticks that stick really well. But I love how you can work with matte medium and acrylic paint. So that's what I'm going to be using to glue down my collage papers. And here, as I show you, this is actually from my, when I was a little girl, I was learning, learning how to write and I still have those books, uh, those notebooks and they're, they're, I think they end up better being on something in my work that being stored in a box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start ripping my paper and I want to create a patchwork right here using neutral papers. So, and I don't want to overthink things. So I'm going to be kind of fast and I'm going to get started. So I add some matte medium to my board and I add matte medium to my paper. I'm going to go over the edges. Maybe you can see here, it's over the edge. And I prefer to do that to be, instead of being like really perfect and getting everything really, like really well done, let's say. I'm getting some bubbles here, but if I go over my matte medium, and my brush, I can brush those bubbles out. But then again, if I get bubbles, it's perfectly fine. It's part of the work and it's a little bit of texture. So I'm going over on top with the matte medium. Of course, you can also use gloss medium or there's a product called GAC, G-A-C. You could also use that. But the thing is when you work with mediums, you know you your acrylics are going to work perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm going to choose this. I'm a graphic designer, so I love texts and I love uh, fonts and numbers. So I think it's very personal the paper that you choose because it will speak, it will say something about you. Okay. Uh, while we create this patchwork, I want my pieces to be in different sizes. I tend to go in a more like horizontal or and vertical grid, but of course you could go diagonally and create different shapes. This is the best works for me. So I have a lot of matte medium, you can see here, but it's not wasted because now I have some, something for my next piece. I don't like these straight edges. So what I tend to do is to use these papers, the straight edges on the edges of my canvas for my substrate. This is an old dictionary. And I think something that ends up ends up happening to me is that I for some reason everything ends up being like the same size. It's 
unconscious, but that kind, kind of happens. Now I'm going to glue this down horizontally. And I like this little tear on the page. So I'm not going to let it hang out. And this is way too, for me, for my taste, it's way too symmetrical. So I'm going to unglue it. And because I have so much matte medium everywhere, I can do that. I don't have to do it like right away. I don't have to stick it out right away. So one of the things, Eulalia, that I notice you're doing is you're putting the medium on the back of the paper as well as on the substrate. Yes. And that makes it really easy to reposition the also, paper. Yes. <clears throat> yes. And it's a lot of matte medium because it's also going on top. It's on the substrate, that's the wood, then on the paper, on the back of the paper, and then on top of the paper. So we're creating basically like a, a layer of matte medium. This is an old ledger. I love this. Like little numbers. I'm going to cut it out and stick it somewhere. And as you can see, I'm, I'm going really fast because I don't want to think. I don't want to overthink. I don't want to uh, take too much time placing my collage. I want it to be very intuitive, very fast, very, I like it here. So there it goes. I do know so, some things that I like. Uh, I don't want this straight edge, so I cut it out. And later, we're going to use some of the acrylic paint. So we're going to go over some of the things we collaged. No. This is happening again. This is almost the same size as this, and I don't want that. So either I go up, I go down, and I go down. There is a little bit of thought, but not too much. It's more like, let's do it and go fast and, and let our brains turn off, maybe, like not overthink things and and have fun. I really wish that whenever you're making any project you're making, you're having fun. For me, that is one of my major things, is to have fun. Now in this paper, I decided to only do down this little thing. And I'm covering what I said that I really like, but that's okay. I still have more paper and I could can use it somewhere else. Okay. Oh, look, this was this one was already cut. The reason I'm working with this really neutral, these neutral colors is because as you saw, the acrylics I have and the papers we painted are really, really bright. And when we get things, bright colors next to neutral colors, they tend to pop out and they, because there's like this contrast, the bright colors seem brighter when you have a duller, let's call it duller background or duller color. Okay, I'm going to choose randomly. 
this is really old, so I, I don't feel guilty about throwing books, old books, <clears throat> out. So don't feel that way. They end up in a line and landfill if if we don't use them. So th I think this is a great way to use something that was supposed to go to the garbage. If you don't like bubbles, another way is you start seeing them is having some little bit of matte medium in your fingers is to go over in little circles. Uh, that way you will get rid of the of the bubbles. If you don't like the feeling of Bad medium, you can you can always use gloves when you're working. I really like working and getting dirty, getting my getting my hands dirty, so I don't mind. And I usually wash pretty well after a session with acrylic paint. So I know it's not great to have acrylic paint in your hands, but I really prefer like getting my hands dirty. So I'm almost done. I think I need something else maybe around here. This is, I don't, we don't need to completely cover the background. We can leave some of these spaces. We are, we are going to cover them with acrylic paint, but it's very different when the acrylic paint goes on top of this paper than when it goes on top of the original substrate. So I want to, this is not working entirely for me, so I want to add some paper right there. And I have a craft paper that is pretty similar, but I want to add it anyway because it's going to be a different texture. And sometimes it's a bit, it's not easy to go over some of the things you have already put down. But try to be brave and try to do it. It's, it's not lost work. It's not a waste of time. It, it's it's having fun and it's also a way of getting like energy out of you in this very fast and very not careful way. So you are getting your energy out and getting ready to start a new thing. I'm going to turn my, my panel to see how it's looking the other way round, round, so. I'm looking at my papers and I don't know what I want until I see it. I will see and say, okay, that's what I want, but I haven't seen anything yet. 
like for example this i really like this but i think if i put something out okay it's if i put something similar again it's like way too much for for what i already have Okay, this is Like this edge, so just put it down. I need something here. For me, working this way is like completing a puzzle that moment i put something here like something of the complete image comes to my mind so i see that i need something here because i put this here i don't know if you get me it's but it, yeah it's making a puzzle without really knowing what the final image is Any questions, any, anything going on? So we have a question, Eulalia. Yeah. Um, does the arrangement of pieces need to be a little more grid-like, squarish, or can it look more chaotic and random? It can look more chaotic and random, definitely. Uh, we are going to work in a kind of patchwork way so maybe for this time try a little more grid like but the, again you can make crazy quilts on this patchwork so it's really up to you did that answer the question or was it more like whatever <laughs> Carissa, did that answer your question? She said yes, just wanted to make sure what I had made was okay to use. Yes, everything you make, it's okay. And that is your style. If you're going really crazy all over the place and don't have like really everything is crazy that's perfectly fine that is the way you express yourself so it's perfect and this is something i like to do and it is i cut out this paper and then I cut it again, I ripped it out, and then I cut it, ripped it again. And now I'm going to glue them together, but in different directions. And what happens is that you have like the same design, but you have it not in the same order. So it gives a little bit of, it gets interesting. I'm going to do it again here using that same paper. Okay, so I think we are done. I want to know how the people that are following along are doing. Like, do you need um, a minute? Are you done? How are you doing?
You can pop it into the chat, whoever's whoever's working along. <clears throat> So those of you who are working along, are you done? Yeah. Okay. So Carissa says she's done, ready for the next step. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. So I'm going to get this thing out of the way. One, if you're going to work with collage, one suggestion that I make is that you get your papers like the same colors together. And that way it's easier to reach for papers in, in colors. I mean, if you want a red paper, it's better to have like a folder of red papers than going over all of the collage. Another thing is I start growing out really small pieces because unless I will get like like this, I might not use ever again. So this one goes on the trash, in the trash. And this one was right there. So I'm going to collage it. This one got saved from the trash. Now, here we have the acrylics that we use to make our papers that are still getting, are still drying out. If you have a heat tool or a drying hair dryer, it's a great way to dry your papers because these are still not completely dry, but that's okay. So these are the colors that I used. And I'm going to just pick a color, any color that I like, and I'm going to paint it. And as you can see, I still have medium on my brush, and that's perfectly fine because it's acrylic, acrylic medium. So it works perfectly fine with the acrylic. I don't want to use like my really dark colors, but it's perfectly fine if you do. That's also up to you. So I'm, I'm starting with this bright aqua green. And there's no really there's no need to mix them outside. I like to put them directly on top and start painting. And I'm going over the papers. I'm, I'm working on the little space that had no collage, but when I paint, I want to go over the different papers to integrate everything. Okay, now I know all these colors work well together, so I can pick any color I want. And I'm going to go with this pink. One thing that I really love about acrylic paint, acrylic paint, yeah, acrylic paint, is that I can always wait for them to dry and change the color. If I change my mind, if I don't like something, I wait for it to dry and I paint over it. And it's perfectly fine. So here I'm doing the same. I, I'm painting over the collage. And 
what I want is to integrate all of the collages, all of the papers that I have. So I do that by painting over them. And I let parts show. For example, here, I want this to show a little better. So with my paper towel, I will lift up some of the paper, some of the, I'm sorry, some of the acrylic paint. Okay, I like this pale lemon. And as you can see, also, I tend to work really fast. Um, I like it when I don't overthink things. I like to go with my gut. I, I don't think there's like a real way that this could go wrong. Because everything that I have so far, I like. The colors I, I'm using, I like. So it, it is going to be something I like. You can cover as much or as little as you want, but I think it's important that we can still see our papers. For example, this paper right here, this one was the craft paper that I said that was too similar to my background. And I'm really not liking that color. So let's cover it up with some of this light blue permanent. Okay, there's another brush and I don't know if you can these two colors are looking pretty similar on camera I think but what happens is that they become really really vibrant the moment I put it next to a uh, neutral color like here you can see how vibrant this color becomes oh i'm seeing a oh, message yeah i'm uh, taking a look at that um <clears throat> okay can i splash or drop some paint too or are we focusing on brushing on for this layer i think let's focus um, brushing on and then I think it's a great idea to add some splashes of different colors so but I would love to see what you come up with so go ahead and do it if you want to now I'm I'm going to add a little bit of color here because I think it's enough with this I have four co colors here I think enough of acrylic colors so we're going to be adding more color later when we use our collage. But I think for now, so for now, um, I think because I have this yellow here, I might use it right here. And remember, if you don't like a color, you can wait for it to dry and go over it later. I'm going to add just because a little tiny bit of yellow here. I 
my brush is really dry at this moment and I'm liking the texture I'm getting. And this is not something like I planned, but I like it. I like how it looks, so I will do it. Continue to do it. And here I'm mixing these two colors. Again, that wasn't planned. I usually don't mix them, but they are liking each other. So. Now this is still wet. This was the first color I added and it's still wet. And if I try to add a second layer, it's going to move. So I think it's best to let it, let it dry a little bit before we add a second layer, especially to this yellow. I want to add a second layer because it's not, it's more translucent. So Want it a little bit more dark. And I think I want this pink over here, a tiny little bit pink. I almost always forget about the edges when I'm working on a wood canvas, a wood panel. So remember that you have all this space all along the edges. So go over your paint as well as your collage. Okay, I think I like how this is going. Right. I think it's a good idea. Now I'm going to stop and we'll see what's going on with our collage papers. Let's see if they're dry, ready. They're pretty much dry. But if they're not dry, because we don't need this to be like a flat background. I like when things have texture. I'm going to go over with my paper towel and dry it out. But it was pretty much dry. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so this is one. Let's see how this is going. Oh. Great. I think this one, this one is going to come off a lot. But again, it's texture, so that's perfect. It's really, really dry. And my favorite color. Yeah, these are dry too. Yeah. Okay, so now with this color that we have here, as I told you, we're not going to use them all. We are going to, because we use, oh, this came up. It's okay, it's texture. <laughs> because we use these colors that are more neutral or light, a great idea would be to use more contrasting colors. So this blue is a great addition. This pink is going to be great. In this case, I think 
this muted green is better here because we already have this one. So, and this, I like the really bright ones. Now I'm going to get my scissors. And one element that I really like making is triangles and adding triangles to my, to this type of paintings. I want to show you again my home book. Here instead, like I like using, I like contrast. So I like using like geometric shapes with more organic shapes and for example here i have a lot of triangles next to a shape that is more uh, less geometric and so is here and i love adding triangles so that's what i'm going to do here i'm going to cut out triangles from the colors I decided I want to go here. Another question while you're cutting. <clears throat> yeah. Can you ever use watercolor? Well, I, I think you could. The thing is, I, I don't enjoy, I don't enjoy using watercolor because I don't work with it a lot. So I don't know how it, it reacts when you add a second layer or when you try to, I have the feeling that when you work with, with watercolors, you're, everything's going to move, like nothing is permanent. And I prefer things that are permanent, like I can work on top of this pink, or I can work on top of any of these colors and can change it. But I also know that I'm not an expert in watercolors, so maybe that can be done like working in layers. Lisa, you work with watercolors. What so do I do, think? I work with watercolors and I'm also really having a, a great time with uh, paper collage right now. <clears throat> and one of the things that I, that's hard is with, if you're using watercolor with water and you're adding it, you're painting it on top of paper that hasn't been coated then it it can degrade the paper a bit. So you have to kind of know what papers you're working with when you do that. Um, you could on a on palette paper, like if you if you have like acrylic palette paper, you could put a little bit of watercolor paint and you can take the matte medium, for instance. Yes. And you can mix that and make this like glaze. And sometimes that as a wash on top of um, some of those neutral papers can be really fun to do. Um, I do that with gouache most of the time, most of the time, but it's the same idea, right? You can also do that with acrylic. You can just really, really um, have mostly medium and just like a, a touch of color and then just sort of like glaze a color over a section. Like, I like that. Um, otherwise, I, I haven't really used watercolor on, on paper myself either, uh, on collage paper. <clears throat> but I th think that's a great idea. If you mix the watercolors with a medium, it can be matte medium or gloss medium. And that means that the watercolor is not going to move. It's going to be permanent. So this size, I just start cutting it and that was the size that came out. But I think that for my, for this piece, I think it, it's good, it's a good size. So it really depends on how much, well, we really don't know what's going to happen actually right here. We, we don't know, I don't know what we're going to make I know that I'm going to cut some shapes and I'm going to cut shapes that have a meaning for me. Like in the book that I show you, the birds represented my family, the house represented, the little cut out house represented my house and the plants 
represented like the possibility of having trees near. So I work with a lot of symbols and I know that that's what I want here. So if you have any symbols or if you have anything that you associate with a feeling or a thing, then it's great. That is the perfect thing that you should cut out. And yes, the size, I really don't know. We'll see what happens when we start gluing down. I'm also going to cut this. You, I would suggest that you don't, that you freehand cut things, like without having a, a thing. I don't know how to say it, like just go for it. Like don't have, you don't have to have the image uh, drawn behind or anything like that. We all sort of know how a triangle looks, so go for it, try and make a triangle. And if it's not perfect, that's perfect. That's even better because it's your hand and that triangle is yours and nobody else's. Okay, I'm going to switch to another color. So, Eulalia, do you just start cutting out a bunch of shapes first so that you have a lot of material to work with as opposed to imagining what's going to go on the on the canvas and then cutting one thing and gluing it and then building up as you go? Yes, I like to have like my, let's say this is my raw material. Like we had our acry acrylics all set out. This is my raw material these shapes that I'm creating right here. And after I create these shapes, these triangles that are pretty easy to cut, I will think of the sim symbols I was telling you. Uh, the symbols that are yours and that you enjoy. And I really don't know what is going to happen right here. But yes, starting with the triangles, get my, my hand hands moving, my brain working, and thinking about what I will do next. Oh, I love this pink. This pink is so beautiful. And it smells, it smells really weird, but Okay, I have to I have to give you this comment, Olalia, because it it is exactly what I was thinking as well. Linda says, I love that comment that triangle is yours and nobody else's. <laughs> yeah. That that is true, yeah. Yeah, I think I think things that are made by us humans need to be made by us like you can see that it was made by a human and not by anything else not by i mean you could get uh some of those thingies that you push and you get uh a triangle a perfect triangle but punches these are, yeah you could do all of this using punches but then you lose the fun of making them yourself and having them be themselves <laughs> or yourself. Okay, this is, and so I would love to know if any of you even if you're working along or if you're just watching me, if any of you have like repeating things in, in what you work, 
if you have symbols that you use or just things that you use in your work. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so let's see. I have another comment, so I'm going to read that first. When we do the cutting ourselves, we're putting a part of our energy soul into the work which viewers can connect with, connecting with a fellow human. Absolutely. Totally. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then to your question of are there symbols or shapes that you use in your work regularly? Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to get the names here. Janet says leaf shapes, flame shapes, and oh, yeah. seed pod shapes. Those are great. Yes. And um, I think they are simple. You can create them in a way that they're simple enough that you can cut them out. So mm -hmm. if you're planning on making something with collage, that's a great, those are great symbols to use. And Linda says she has a few stamps that she's made that she often uses in her collage journal. Oh, that's great, yeah. And then Elizabeth, um, butterflies, cool. Nice, yeah. You know about the stamps, you could stamp on one of the papers we made, you could stamp and then cut it out and then glue it as collage mm -hmm. or stamp it directly, but you could do that. And butterflies, butterflies are also a great symbol and a great, you can simplify them. I think whenever we're talk, I'm talking about symbols, I think it's great to simplify them to their easiest form, not only to cut them out, but also because they're more readable to outside people. Okay, so I have my triangles here. Now I want to cut out more shapes. And when I was thinking about this class, I thought about dreams. So what do you dream about? You can all, of course, follow along and create the same uh, shapes and images that I'm going to create, Ma, but maybe you want to incorporate your own. So think about what you dream, what you like, what you love, and try to create little symbols out of those. I want to create a person with this really dark blue. And again, if you're having, you could always, of course, and this perfectly fine. You can draw your person or your thing or your symbol on the back. This is how I draw a person. You could draw and cut it out, right? And that's perfectly fine. Or you can freehand it. And once you start using like the same, same symbols over and over, you get better at cutting them out. And we're not looking for a perfect human or a perfect flower, or we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for ourselves. We're making ourselves. So here's my little person. She looks cute. And it's pretty simple, I mean. Right? We're, or at least I'm not looking for something super complicated and she looks too small so I think I'm going to even if I don't know what's going on I can see that because she's a this is a person 
it's immediately our eye is going to focus on this. So I want to make her bigger. I think it's big. Yeah, that's a good size. And I'm going to draw her. And again, the simpler your symbol or the thing you're going to cut out, the better because it's easier. My symbols and the things I cut out for collage are, they don't have a lot of details, but it is up to you to create collage elements that are much more detailed. It really is up to you. And as you can see, this is just a guide. My drawing is just a guide. I'm using it very loosely. Oh, well, you know what? I think we, a great thing I do is to give myself restrictions. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go for it and I'm going to glue her down. Now, I don't know what's going on, what we're going to do next, but now we have something to work off of, right? So having her on the page, it's giving me another piece of the puzzle. And before we do that, maybe in mm -hmm. a round. Yes, I think, I think I'd like it better. Don't overthink it. This is still wet. This haven't dried. It's not dried, completely dry, but okay. So again, I add some matte medium to my substrate. Oh, For us here in Colorado, that would already be dry. Really? Super fast. Okay, so I'm going to do her right here. So I painted this little lady right here and it became my focal point. And one of the reasons is because it's a human and we tend to look at humans and we tend to pay more attention when something has a human form. But it also is the darkest thing in my whole painting and it's a madness. This is really dark, but is not as dense as, as this. So my eye goes instantly here. So I just created a focal point. Okay, now well, we already have this rectangle, this triangle. So why not? I was waiting for this to dry. But I think I'm going to start adding some of this colors. So this this brush has a little bit of blue in it, so I'm going to paint before I continue. Yeah, that's better. And the way I like using my triangle is taking advantage of all these colors that I really like and 
creating because triangles have a shape that imply movement. I want to create like a fun design. That's one of the principles of art. You know, and that is pattern. So what I'm going to do here is to create a pattern using all these little triangles. I am trying to create some contrast. So this triangle here is just, it's not contrasting very well with the background. So I'm going to put it right here. Feel pretty similar to this yellow up here. And here, because I have this light yellow, just because I want to add this darker yellow. I like the way it looks. So those are all the colors I cut out. And now looking at it, I think I want some of this blue in this triangle. And I still have some of that paper, so. And it's okay if they don't touch each other. It's perfectly fine for me. I don't mind that. I'm going to use this yellow here. This yellow is really beautiful. And my favorite pink. I do have an idea that some colors are not going to work as well with the background. For example, if I cut out another blue triangle, and put it right here, it's going to get lost because it's the same color we have on the background. So personally, I prefer to use another color, but none of these colors, you know what? This pink, I want that pink. So the way I work, I think you have noticed is that I don't have a plan. I go along with what I think will go okay. And then I see it, if I like it, that's perfect. And if I don't like it, well, I, Take it out. You know what? This color we haven't used. It. I know it's not, it's very similar to this blue, but this is the aqua color. And I think we can make something with it. We can add some of that color. Okay, so I'm going to add, add one last triangle. And another one here. No. Yeah. No. Nope. Let's leave it that way. But I want this thing to dry. Yeah, I'm not in Colorado, so things take a little more time to dry. So let's see if we can. And I do have a heat gun, but too much noise. Let's wait for that to, to dry a little bit. And while we wait for this acrylic paint to dry, I am going to take out my colored pencils or my paint markers. And I have chosen the similar colors to what I have been using in my page. 
these are these are wax crayons. These are neo colors. One, these are not water soluble, but you could use water soluble ones, and it's perfectly fine. Uh, maybe if you plan on glazing everything or finishing it with something, be careful because if they are water soluble, they will move. So these are the colors I have right here. Oh, we haven't used this color. And I think I didn't paint any papers. Oh, well. So I'm introducing a new color. This is a lilac color. And I'm going to start adding some marks to this blue right here. It's still a little bit wet. And the reason I'm adding marks is because this is a very big space of color. And I want to add some interest because right now it's just that, it's color. So the moment I add some marks, it becomes more interesting to look at. And it looks really beautiful on top of this crushed paper. Lilac. Take this and I'm going to, this is completely dry and I'm going to make a little pattern here. I don't know if any of you like pentangle or things like that. I love doodling and I find it very meditative. So this is the perfect place to work with doodling and sentangles and patterns that are repeated. I'm going to add this is another mark that is pretty that I use pretty constantly in my work. Sometimes when I feel a little bit stuck in what I'm doing, I like to change the tool I'm using. And that makes my brain like stop and rethink everything because now I'm holding something completely different and my brain has to readjust and that way, new things come out. So if you're ever feeling stuck and you work with mixed media, try changing your tool, your supply. So how is, is everybody doing? Lisa, any thing going on? Um, no more questions at the moment, but it would be nice to hear from the people that are um, working along. How's it going? would love to know how <laughs> people are doing. Okay, so here I have a pink. It's pretty similar to this one. So I'm thinking how about if I continue, like it was rain almost this color down. And the marks you make are your own, they're very personal. I like using this. I want to show you why I talked about belly paper at the beginning and we haven't used it. And something that you can do if you're using like a water soluble crayon is to make your marks, let's put this right here. Let's suppose this is water soluble. Make your marks. Cut it out. And resistors or you could rip it out. 
Now I want to use blue. I think I clicked all my one of the people following along is still placing and gluing, but she said she'll catch up. Just keep going. <laughs> okay, perfect. <clears throat> okay, so we have deli paper. I don't know. I'm going to explain what it is in case you don't know. This is a paper that is used in delis where they sell sandwiches and sell things like that. And they use this paper to wrap the food and it has it's very thin is translucent and it has a little bit of wax on it and what happens is because it is translucent when you add it to the paper here this is the side where I have my marks and I'm going to place it upside down Going to add it upside down. And what happens is when you use the matte medium, it becomes almost transparent. There is a question of am I on? Yeah. There was a question about whether you could use parchment paper as a substitute. Yes. Yes, you can. And you can also use tissue paper. Mm -hmm. You can paint on tissue paper. You have to be a little bit careful because it's very delicate. But yes, you can use parchment paper. It has more wax. So it's going to be a little bit, it's going to put up a fight when you add the matte, the matte medium or the medium. But it, it will work. And you can see here that it becomes almost invisible and that is a great way i don't know if this could also work with maybe the watercolors or so that would be a way to to have them stay put and not move around mm -hmm. and here it's maybe you can see it, maybe not. Let's see. You can see there's a difference between these two. So what I'm going to do is get a tiny little bit of that pink. And that way it becomes part of, of our painting because now you're not seeing that line so much. Okay, so we were working here and I got distracted and started making something else. Okay, I, I have this dark blue but I don't know if I want to use it because it might take away from, from my little person. So I, I'm going to leave it right there. This is dry, so I can use my paint marker. This is a Posca paint marker and it needs to be shaken first. And I'm going to make one. Okay, this is almost, I think that's dry. Now I'm going to use another Posca, and this is fluorescent pink, and I love fluorescent colors. So I'm going to make a couple of marks right here. And all these marks are very personal. I'm sure you also have, as you have like 
special symbol. I'm sure you also have your favorite mark or you go to mark. And I think for this project that that's what becomes really interesting is when you put your own marks and you make it your own. I think that is great. So now I have this white color wax crayon, but I don't see where I could, oh yeah. Okay, I think that's enough. It's not working really well, type of thing. So let's go back to collage. And I want, so I'm thinking what my dreams, okay, no, I want to use this first here. This blue, oh no, it's too wet. Okay. That was too much. And if this happens to you, just make it part of your design. I mean, all these accidents are part of what makes your work yours. Okay, and now I want to go back to my collage. And this time I'm going to create a couple of, of symbols. And one of the symbols I use and one of the things, one of the elements that keeps coming up in my work are flowers and leaves. So I'm going to cut a uh, leaf uh, foliage, very tropical foliage. And Again, this is pretty easy, and I would love love it if you would freehand it. But if you don't feel comfortable, it's perfectly fine to have an image, throw an image on the backside and cut it up. And what happens here is that we have end up with two, actually, with two collage collage elements. One is the positive image and one is the negative space. And sometimes this becomes even more interesting than the shape we cut. So I'm going to trim it a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to use this right here because I think it's I like the way it looks. And when we were, when I was adding the collage on the first layer, I didn't want to have any straight edges, but here I do like those straight edges because that creates contrast with everything else we have. Like the triangles, we're creating a contrast in the shape because everything is very organic. Also with the straight lines. And here's the same thing. We have the straight lines and the organic shape on the inside. And this looks nice here, got it right there. There's not a lot of, lot of contrast here, but but that's okay, I, I don't mind that. Now I want to use this, this is the aqua green, and I want to cut out another, 
another botanical element. So Eulalia, as you're going along, <clears throat> I just want to do a quick time check. We're at 741 over here. I think most people are used to kind of being um, done kind of around eight or so. So that's only about 20 minutes. Um, we can okay. keep going further if you if people are willing to, to stick around or we can continue to record it. Um, I'm flexible. Um, just wanted to kind of give you a quick um, idea of what most people are expecting. Okay, so, okay, so we still have 15 minutes, right? Yeah, or I mean, you can we can go over um, a bit. Just some of the people will start dropping off. So yeah, perfect. No, and you don't. I mean, it doesn't have to be all finished, right? I mean, I think the idea is really to just go over all of the different techniques that you're that you're demonstrating. Yeah, and we're ba basically at the end. We're adding the last details, and that is those this little collage elements. But the thing is, when you said eight o'clock, my brain went, what? It's 9.42 for me. Right, different time zone. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm doing now, I know that all the colors I have, all the papers I have will work well here. So it's now up to adding stuff. And personally, I'm a maximalist. I like a lot on top of a lot with a lot on the side. So it's up to you where to stop and how much details and how much elements you want to add. Okay, so that pink was still pretty wet. But... And I have this negative space cutting, but this one I don't absolutely love, so I'm going to forget about it. And now some of this really outrageous pink. So if I, at this moment, um, really thinking about the whole composition, I'm trying to have contrast, but also I wanted to have some balance. And if I were to put this right here, I feel that the whole piece will be more, it had more weight over here. So I have to be careful as I add more and more details that my composition is really balanced. So I think something right here would work really well. So I'm going to cut, and I don't want, sometimes all these little details that and textures are great, but for right now, I don't want it. you know what i just remembered that at some point someone said if they could or it was okay to add some splashes and i think before we start adding all these details the collage details that's a great moment to start adding splashes and and speckling like doing this thing with 
with the brush to get little things. So yeah, those are, I would say those are kinds of marks. So whenever I was making this, that's the perfect moment to add those details. So you had a comment laughing out loud just started drips right before you said that. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that's perfect. So here we have three different things. I have the Posca pink, the this is what the bright pink. Berlin, Berlin pink. And now I want to add this other pink just because I like a lot of pinks there. And you can be, oh, well, I already said it, but I will say it again. You can be as you have a, can have as many or as little details in your collage cutting as you like. I prefer to have very simple shapes, but it is really up to you. I, have, I prefer this one than the actual one, so I'm going to blue that one again. While you're gluing, I'm going to drop into the chat comments um, Eulalia's website. She has a mailing list there that you can sign up for if you want to hear about free courses or other courses that she's teaching, et cetera. So I'm going to drop that link into the um, into the chat. And I will also go out with um, with the newsletter. Yeah. Uh, uh, next week or the next up or the week after that, there's going to be um like a free challenge with another five teachers, and we're going to teach uh, live. We're going to have some live classes, so you're welcome to join. And this is my newsletter where you can sign. You got that, right? Yeah, to everyone, yeah. And, well, that's, and I do have another class that's coming on this year. I really enjoyed this yellow. So, what can I make with this yellow? And of course I'm using flowers here, but you could add just geometric shapes if you don't feel like you want figurative words or things, just go ahead and, and work with geometrics. Another element that I use a lot, maybe I could make one, are birds. I already have like the idea of a bird, but I never get them right. So I'm going to draw it on the back of my little bit.
again, I use it just as a guide. I'm, I'm not following my line. Looking a little weird. Yeah, I don't like that. And because I cut it out and I'm not going to use it here, it doesn't mean that I won't use it later on something else. I like to keep this elements that I cut out and that I like. Uh, nearby. And something that I realized is that when I'm near the end of a piece, I get quieter. And not only like when I'm speaking, but also my brain gets quieter because I have invested so much energy on all of this that I'm calmer and I feel more peaceful. Okay, that's still not loving. Because I know this is my focal, uh, my focal place, my focal image. I'm going to add this little bird looking. Oh my God, it's so stuffy. No. I'm going to add it looking towards my focal point. And that is thinking of my composition. My eye is like making a round because this is very much very bright and it's near this image that is my focal point my eye is going to make this and then go here and go down and then back up and we create like a loop because our composition is working that way I'm going to add another couple of birds. I think most of us know that our brain is, is more interested in odd numbers than even numbers. I really don't know why, but we prefer to see threes than we three of a kind than to see two of a kind so i'm going to add a couple more birds so we have three birds and i'm making them different sizes and the shape um, yeah and the shape is different but i think they're still recognizable as birds And again, I'm going to make the bird look at my person 
better here or I like it better here. It's okay if you try things out before you glue them down, but try not to get too much into the possibilities because there are literally endless possibilities where you can add your collage. You can spend months trying to see where things go. So go with your first, I would suggest that you go with your first instinct and glue things down and add paint and do all the things like really fast. Bird is looking really weird. And I think we could leave things right here, Lisa. Um, everybody, how do you feel if we stop right now? I think it's fine. I mean, I I feel like you've gone over a lot of different techniques, and uh, and I think a lot of this is just about you create the composition that feels right to you. Um, yeah. yeah. So let's see what people are chiming in. So you're getting a lot of thank yous. Very inspirational. Um, people are feeling like journaling. Uh, also. Oh. A lot of people said they really appreciated the fact that you were very encouraging about people trying on out their own ideas and getting their own uh, personal experiences into the art. Oh, I'm going to. Oh, All right. That, so that thank you so much so for nice. thank but, you so but, much for being here. No, thank you. All of you for joining me and thank you so much for your comments. I, I really love hearing that now you want to go and journal and try things out. I would love to see. I would absolutely love to see what you create. Um, and if something different comes out of what I did or something completely different or you get an idea because of something I did, I would love to see it. So. Yeah, And uh, if you guys would post to the Inspiration um, community page on Facebook, and I will get you that link, Eulalia, so you can go in there and look as well. Um, that would be really great. Yeah, You're getting a uh, lot of a lot of thank yous. Um, thank you all. All right. Well, um, thank you, everybody, for coming. And we will be, you know, this is recorded, so we will make this available for, for people to look at um, later as well. And like we said, share your art, show us what you're doing. And uh, I don't know, bring it to the meetup or something if you have it ready by then. Great, thank you. Okay, so bye everybody. And thank you so much for the invitation. Bye Lisa. Bye.